players if you're joining on the replay and you do have questions about this topic on taxes feel free to tweet directly at me um, or you know go to this tweet uh, that's on uh, this periscope broadcast and just res respond to it and i will either address them directly or answer them on another periscope so to uh, my second Money Matters uh, course. And this is, um, so my goal this year in 2016, in addition to Money Habits, which is uh, my daily broadcast at 10 a.m. Uh, Central Time every day, where I talk to you about developing better money habits, share you my tips and tricks of how I manage my money, and um, you know can answer your questions. I'm doing a, um, Twice a week, I'll be doing a Money Matters broadcast, and I'm covering some of the basics uh, of uh, finance, personal finance, that I think um, people are running away from, ignoring, and generally not taking seriously enough. If they, uh, So if you're serious about building wealth or building financial freedom or having financial independence and you're not paying attention to these topics that I cover, um, then it's going to be really hard. Like you're going to make it a lot harder on yourself to achieve your goals. So um, that's why in the last uh, earlier this week, and I'll cover these again, um, I'll probably cycle through uh, and these are live casts, so they're a little bit different and they also give you an opportunity to ask questions. So I, I covered credit um, earlier this week. So today I'm covering taxes and I'm going in a certain order because I do think that everybody jumps to wanting to know investments and how you make money off of money where they haven't really covered the that whole thing. Like I'm like, if you have a credit card debt that you're paying interest on, please, please don't worry about anything else. Uh, once you have credit uh, taken care of and you're no longer paying interest, the second place that people most likely will ignore is taxes. And again, if you're joining outside of the U.S., some of this may not be applicable. Now, I know that there is obviously taxation um, elsewhere in the world. I'm not very familiar with other uh, tax systems. I have grown up my adult life in the uh, U.S. tax system. And I've been doing my own taxes since I was since I first started earning money at 18, um, and I have been doing them. They have my tax returns have become progressively more complicated. Like now they're thick, and I send them, you know, in the big envelope. And um, I have just evolved over time. And my stance on tax and tax returns has been to always uh, do them myself and to learn through it. Because every time you fill out a tax return, you learn a little bit about um, about what you need to care about. So what I want to do first, uh, so if you're just joining and you're new to me, my name is Joanna Zarek. I, uh, my goal is to educate others about uh, the big topics in personal finance because I think that um, we live, we go through life, uh, Sweden. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's this interruption. Um, and so the, uh, the like people take and, and they go out and they work very hard for their money. And then there are just these big swatches of personal finance that they don't know enough about. They don't pay attention to. And they kind of say, well, you know, it's complicated. I don't want to learn. I don't want to spend the time. And so here's what I want to talk to you about today. Um, it, so U.S. taxes. Um, so the base, you know, here's what I want everyone to do. Like, if you've never filled out your tax return, please, please, please make an attempt to do it. Uh, there are free online um, software. If you if you don't have a very high income, they'll let you file for free. But you can go on and you can you can do it. If that still intimidates you, but you have had your tax return prepared before, please review your tax return. If it's less than like 10 entries, which means you're like a W2 employee and it's just like 10 things that are in there, you can do it yourself. Ask yourself, how much do you have to work to pay for the tax, like the return fee, and can you just do it yourself? I guarantee you that learning about taxes will help you in building wealth, uh, financial freedom, whatever. You will get more money if you understand how the tax system can work for you and how you can take advantage of all the things in the tax code that have been created over time to help you, to help everyday people uh, to save, to you know, do this, do that. And so I want to go over some of the basics. Okay, so um, 
and we're in tax season, so this is appropriate. And again, if you have questions, you can either ask me here on Periscope. Uh, you can always uh, send me a message on Twitter. It's the same exact handle, um, and I will answer them. I have been literally looking at taxes and doing other people tax returns. I've always done them as like a something as a, as a giving back, even though I'm not like a professional tax return person. I don't want to do that. I like to educate people about it. Um, then I can answer your questions. So the first thing uh, in the U.S. tax that makes a difference is your filing status. And as you know, uh, there's just four filing statuses, single, um, head of household, married jointly, and married uh, filing separately. So um, single is for everyone that is not legally married and has no dependents. So I don't care if you have a house, you're not a head of household. <laughs> to be a head of household, which is our second one, you have to have a dependent as defined by the IRS guidelines. Um, married jointly, so that's if you're legally married and you are filing a joint return, that means you're both liable for whatever the tax return says. Married filing separately is a very, very unusual and rarely used um, uh, filing status because it's for people who for some reason don't want to sign on to their spouse's potential tax liability and they will file married separately and there are some special cases in which may be better, but for most married people, married filing jointly is the way to go. So. The next thing that matters to you as a tax return, uh, on the U.S. tax return, is the exemptions. Every person gets one exemption. That's it. So only one person can use an exemption on all tax returns. So like if your parents claim you, if you're younger and your parents are claiming you as a dependent, they get the exemption. You don't. No double counting. And um, so every person in your household you get an exemption for. So if you have you know, two, two people, two kids, that's four exemptions. And the exemption number changes every year. Um, and so um, just pay attention to it. 2015, it's a nice round number. It's $4,000 a person. Um, the next thing that matters to your U.S. taxes is whether you're a W-2 employee or a 1099 slash Schedule C. Now, there are lots of other sources of income, but the majority of people will fall into one of those two buckets, so like a W-2 employee or a 1099 Schedule C person. Um, and so that, which, which bucket, and we'll cover both buckets, because which bucket you fall into, different things matter in terms of the impact that that has on your tax liability and therefore the lower your tax liability, the more money you keep in your pocket. This is really, really important because your earnings, right, whatever you earn, and then whatever you get to keep in your pocket is actually what matters. So other income that's fairly common, um, like some investment income, including some of your interest that maybe your bank pays you, um, your dividends if you have uh, any type of stock holdings, maybe rental income. If, you, if you're at that level where you have multiple things on your income list, you probably can't afford a tax professional. So I encourage you to do whatever you need to do with the, the money that you have. But if you don't have a bunch of, if you're not filling out a bunch of different boxes on that income statement, um, do it yourself, save some money. So <laughs> learn about it because I tell you, I'm telling you now, the more you do it and the more you learn, the more you'll have um, a habit. Okay, so what are the typical biggest impact items in your tax situation? So I'm going to go over the, the five for W-2 workers and like the six or so for 1099 or Schedule C. Now these are not exhaustive. These are just the biggest things that have an impact on you in terms of what you keep. So for W-2 workers, it is your federal tax rate. The federal tax rate does have the biggest impact unless you are at a really, really low level, and then it's pay payroll tax. So the federal tax rate, and most people, like, they hear these uh, th terms thrown out, like um, your marginal tax rate or, you know, your actual tax rate or your average tax rate, like what was your tax rate. Um, and those are just different numbers. So the thing that I, that I tell people to pay attention to is what's your marginal tax rate. It's like, where do you fall? And marginal tax rate just means the next dollar that you would earn at what rate would that be taxed at? And so that's not gonna be like your, your like that's, that's not an, a neat equation. Um, so as you know, um, that was the first slide I had up that I was, uh, that I, I think I'll post that on Twitter as well. Again, um, is the the, the, ta the marginal tax rate is you know the first tax rate is 10 percent, 15 percent, 25 percent, 28 percent. Now, once you're in a 28 percent tax rate uh, tax uh, bracket, that means you're getting close to six figures, or you're, or you've gone over six figures. So um, it's good and bad, right? Like so, it means like okay, your next dollar is going to get taxed higher, but it means you're doing pretty well for yourself. So always take that as uh, you know, don't don't fret too much. So federal tax rate, the payroll tax rate. One of the 
uh, least understood things for people uh, when they do their taxes, when they get their first paycheck, is always like, what are all these other things, the deductions? So payroll taxes, otherwise known as FICA taxes, um, that's just like, that's taxes you owe on dollar one, right? So um, research it. If you want to get more detail, you know, just Google uh, on the IRS website, understand what payroll taxes are. Those fund social security programs and uh, Medicare programs. And uh, they will come up again when we talk about 1099 workers because you pay, the dub you pay your employee and employer uh, portion of it. And that's when you uh, roll it all in, that's 15.3% of the employee and the employer total uh, total liability. Um, but if you're just uh, on the employee side, that's 7.35%. That's a lot. You know what? If you can get 7% return on investment, that would be a pretty good investment, actually. Um, state tax rate is your next biggest bucket, and that depends where you, where you live. I live in Illinois. That's 5% uh, state tax rate. It matters, right? People move to zero state tax rate uh, states, like Florida, um, especially when they're really looking to maximize the the income that they have. You know, if they have a retirement account and they don't want to pay state tax, they may be like, well, you know, the five percent. Like, I want to pay less. So, state tax rate um, matters as well. Uh, the tax programs that your employer has, and if you participated, so these are the four hundred one k's, the FSAs, the HSAs, whatever it is, whatever tax advantaged account and program that your employer offers. If you're not taking advantage, if you can use that money for something and you're not taking advantage of it, that's going to cost you a really, really important uh, to for you to understand that you are leaving money on the table. Now, obviously, if you don't have dependents, you don't participate in the dependent FSA, uh, but the 401k is, is no reason not to participate in it. It is government subsidizing your contribution by giving your money back in the, in, the, in, the tax, uh, in the tax deduction. And then if you're more sophisticated further down in life, itemized deductions will be the, the, the last big sort of bucket of things that make a difference in your, in your taxes for W-2 workers. 1099 Schedule C, sim some stuff is similar, some stuff isn't, and some stuff has a bigger impact even, right? So federal tax rate, of course, will matter uh, for 1099. So 1099 is you're a contract worker, you're a freelancer, right? You're collecting money from bunches of clients, they're just paying you, invoicing people, your Schedule C or 1099, um, you know, I just combine them because you're treated very similarly by the IRS. It's like you are liable for everything. Um, so which means the federal tax, uh, the federal tax rate will make a difference. Um, obviously, the next big thing that I think the 1099 and Schedule C people underestimate is how much deducting your expenses. And this is why I'm like, the tracking, I, and I know if you've seen me before, and, and you've heard my stuff, track your expenses, track everything that goes out the door. And if you're a business owner or a freelancer, so important. Everything you do, if you can track it, if you can keep track of it, you set up a system that works for you, every dollar you can deduct, it's like if you're in the 28, that's 28 cents, right? Like every dollar you can find to deduct and track. And all the IRS asks you to do is that you record it, like which means like write it on an Excel spreadsheet. Even people, I mean, it used to be, uh, if you just write it on a piece of paper and like, I take a picture of it, like if you want an electronic record or just put in a shoebox, that's fine for the IRS. The IRS just says that you need to, um, uh, that you need to be able to do document your expenses. You don't have to have actual like proof unless it's over $75. And um, so mileage and, and just like ex here, little things here and there. So I don't use cash. I mean, you know, like, don't try using a credit card because it's just, you won't, you'll forget, right? And so regularly looking through and recording your expenses makes such a huge difference for 1099 or Schedule C people. Do it. Um, it it's, it's, I know it's important to get clients. What? Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, and so it is important to, to, you know, get work and get your clients and, and you do everything else, but try and have some regular ways in which you are, uh, you a regular system in which you're tracking those expenses. It makes such a huge difference. Huge, huge. Um, payroll tax rate, uh, it's, you know, it'll hurt you because if you're not 
planning on it, if you're not doing your, well, your federal estimated taxes and your payroll taxes and included in it, you're going to suffer a tax time if you're not ready for it. If it's your first year or even if it's your second year or if you just added some freelance work on top of your regular job and you're not accounting for it, um, for both the payroll taxes and the federal tax rate and the state tax rate, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. So uh, start planning for it. It's not all your money. Like, think 50%. You know, think 50% of what you're getting out there on your, um, on your, uh, you know, on your invoices. You've got to set that 50% aside. Now, I understand if you're just starting out and it's pretty low, maybe it's not at 50%. But trust me on this. I've been doing this for a really, really long time, and I've had, you know, I've had my own business for six years now. Um, you've you've got to set it aside, especially if you have some weird combination of W-2 with you know spouse and and your Schedule C. Um, yeah, it's, you know, like when you add up all the numbers and you're like, oh, it's not pretty, right? That's why the deductions matter. Uh, so payroll tax rate, because you're both the employee and the employer, that's 15.3%. 15.3%. That's a lot of money. State tax rate, again, it's going to be similar. Um, for self-employed individuals until 99, you know, you've got to figure out, like, what's your retirement plan? Because you don't have a 401k that you sign up, you know, automatically through your employer. You've got to put some thought into it. You have got to get an IRA. If you're going to be in business as a, a business owner and you're a solopreneur, the solo uh, individual 401k is a fantastic way to go. It is super flexible. Uh, it lowers your tax, uh, it can really lower your tax liability, and uh, you can administer it yourself. When it's a small plan, go through Vanguard. I use the Vanguard solo uh, individual 401k. It is huge to have a retirement strategy when you're a solopreneur. And then uh, health care. If, you uh, if you're paying for your own health care, that's going to be a huge deduction um, because the you know, IRS have passed um, has passed some legislature that allows you to do that. And obviously, if you have some, you know, again, further in life, you're going to have some itemized deductions. So those are the, the two buckets, the, the two lists. And here, let, maybe I can do, um, here, let's see if I can, so I undo stop, uh, double tap. Okay, let's see if I can work this. Okay. This is what I just said uh, in terms of what are your typical biggest impacts in your, ta in your tax situation. And again, this is 100% uh, it doesn't cover 100% of things. I'm just saying these are the biggest buckets that people don't think about. Um, and if you start thinking about big buckets, you'll be able to, um, you'll be able to start planning for it. But you've got to pay attention. Uh, taxes are, are your biggest expenditure. If you, it, it, it just, it just you, don't, you don't think about it because you're not spending the money unless you're writing estimated tax payment checks to the government. Then you start thinking about it. When you're writing that big check, and it's big because it's in proportion to your income, it's going to be big no matter where you are. So even if you're just starting out, you're going to be like, holy crap, that is a big check. Um, you are going to start paying attention to taxes. I guarantee you, it, whatever time you spend on on taxes, or even with your tax, whoever's doing your taxes, whoever's your accountant, ask them, say, can you sit down and kind of walk me through it, right? Can we plan something? Don't just have them fill it out and like sign it and send it and be like, whew, it's done. Pay attention to it. I can tell you, I cannot emphasize enough how much of a difference that makes, okay? Uh, so yeah, we covered, we covered social security taxes, but let me just break it down. Social security is 6.2% uh, employee liability, 6.2% employer liability, up to $118,500. And after $118,500, if you ever, if you're a high earner or you have, you know, all of a sudden that disappears. So anything you earn over that, all of a sudden you get kind of a, a discount because that payroll tax, like, it just stops at that level. So you just have to pay for the first $118,500. Uh, Medicare, 1.45 percent employee, 1.45 percent employer, and that is no limit. So 2.9, if you're a Schedule C on 1099, that's 2.9 percent out of your every dollar, you know, 2.9 cents, almost three cents out of every dollar that you earn has to go to paying for Medicare. Uh, we want people to stay healthy, and we want them to not, you know, they can't afford it, or if they're old, if they're elderly, um, we want them to, to be covered. Um, if you really, really high earner, don't forget, a couple years ago, an additional Medicare tax was passed. So if you were married fi like filing jointly and you're over the $250,000 limit, you're like, whoa, what's that? That's an extra tax in my line item, and I'm paying 0.9%. So again, just a little bit more, and that's on earned income, right? So high earner, 
because um, we have talked about differences in income before, and I will talk about them again because I don't think people understand that rich people get taxed differently than earners. All right, um, marriage penalty. So for those of you who are married or are hoping to be married and you are both working and you are both progressing in your careers, I have some bad news. Uh, the, um, the tax rates do not favor the married. They don't favor the double income households. It is, um, it is true, it's true. Your tax liability overall, um, if you're two uh, high income earners joining forces together, you are penalized by the IRS uh, for your situation. So when you, when you sign the marriage certificate, uh, and let's say each one of you was making six figures, and then you go and you're like, wait a minute, I feel like there's less money here. Because uh, you know, either your refund's gonna be smaller, you're gonna owe, um, or you're gonna have to adjust your, um, your deductions on your like, tax form at the beginning of the year. Just something to, to think about. Um, I did talk about how incomes tax differently. Um, dividend incomes tax differently than capital gains income, than you know, uh, business income than W-2 income. Uh, so keep that in mind, right? Like dividend income is, um, doesn't experience any pay payroll taxes. So dividend income, even though it's taxed at the same federal tax rate as your income, it doesn't, uh, you don't have to pay payroll taxes on it because they're not payroll, right? They're not earned uh, that way. Capital gains income, and again, this is where the wealthy was like, oh, don't you want to, you want to have a lower capital gains income, don't you? Most people don't have capital gains income. I know it's sad, and we should. We should all participate in the capital markets more, but most people don't. And that's, that's taxed at a really low level. Um, let's see, I have my quote. Okay, so if you're in a really low um, tax bracket for ordinary income, so 10 to 15 or 15% tax bracket for ordinary income, and you have long-term capital gains, long-term means more than a year um, of the held asset, your capital gains rate is zero. <laughs> if you're in the 28 through 35 tax bracket, then your long-term capital gains rate is 15, and if you're in the maximum tax bracket, which right now is 39.6%, your long-term capital gains rate is 20%. But you don't, hello, you do not pay payroll taxes on that capital gains. You know, so capital gains income is more, more money in your pocket for the same sort of same level of income than, um, than you would otherwise get from your earnings. Um, what else did I want to talk to you about today? That, I think, about... Uh, you know, that covers the basics. What am I doing? I'm talking about the U.S. tax system. I know, it's so, so fascinating. Most people um, feel like that's not an interesting topic, but I, I'm trying to help people who want to um, achieve a path towards financial freedom and who um, want to convert their earnings into a higher net worth over time. And I'm trying to, to educate people on the impact of these various pieces, big pieces. That will have uh, that that will have an effect on it. So if you hope, or you're planning to, or you're working towards accumulating more more wealth, uh, first, like you're going to have to figure out how to make more money, right? But once you make more money, you have a couple choices. You can just upgrade your lifestyle and spend it, or you can save it and then and therefore invest it. And I think taxation plays a huge role in how much of that money you get to keep, so therefore get to invest, and how and when you invest, what happens to those investments, what happens to those gains. And again, that's why the tax, uh, you know, when you put your money in your 401k and it grows, there's no tax bill. Not right away, not right away, right? Like, so your net worth can grow. Um, you know, that's the whole point of those tax deferred accounts is that your, your gains are not being taxed, so they're reinvested and you're buying basically more more stocks with it or whatever you're buying and then you're getting um, a bigger benefit because it's just compounding and we're talking about compounding we do have to do a like a specific compounding uh, money matters talk because i don't think people understand the power of compounding over time and how that in itself how starting early even if it's small uh, it does two things one it gives you the runway uh, of time for compounding but it also sets an expectation in your own mind. You know, this year I saved fifty dollars, or a hundred, or a thousand, or five thousand, whatever it may be. And next year I'm gonna up my game, right? It sets you in a motion of this is something that I do. It it gives you an identity. It says I am an investor, 
And when you have that identity, you're going to start thinking differently and you're going to start act differently. And you're going to say, oh, what can I do with this $5? Hey, you know what? I'm an investor and I can invest it. And that's why the psychology of it is really, really, really important. That's why even if you just have $100 or if you, if you can't do it for yourself, do it for your children. I know that's such a like cliche thing, but educate yourself and about finances because if you feel like, you know what, it's too late, I'm struggling, it's so hard, do you want your kids to go through the same thing? No, no, you don't. You want them to participate in the greater system, you know, the, 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 the great capitalist system that we have, uh, or, you know, it, maybe it's not that great, but like you either benefit from it or, or, you, or you suffer from it. Uh, and I just, I think that like, like open your eyes, get educated and uh, pay attention, be curious, inquire, ask questions. Don't just hand over money to people, whether it's your accountant, your gov government, your lawyer, anybody. Don't hand over your money without asking, well, where's it going? Like, what's happening to it? And is there some way I can pay less? Um, because that's what wealthy people do. They're like, oh, you know, let's pass some legislature. Read a little bit. Read, like, Washington Post uh, put an article. They're lobbying like crazy to put in some special. By the way, 99% of the tax code doesn't apply to you and me. It doesn't apply to you and me. 403B, right? Like, that's how many sections of the tax code. I, and 99% of it doesn't apply to the 99%. It applies for the 1%. Some dude with money, he goes, you know what, maybe we can pass some legislature about how I'm not taxed on that income, how I'm not taxed on that holding. And that's what, you know, they're going to spend millions of dollars on the lobbyists to try to get something written into the tax code so that when it comes time to defend them from not paying taxes on their wealth, they're like, oh, it's in the section 571H. It says if I name my corporation this and that, or if I transfer my money to the Bahamas and then reinsure it, no, no federal tax. And so I didn't pay it because it's in the tax code that I paid somebody $5 million to lobby you for. Oh, awesome. Oh, I know. I don't want to depress you, but, but that's the truth. That's the truth. And people don't know it. They just ignore it. They're like, oh, yeah, let's, you know, let's, let's keep more of our money. No, living wealthy people keep more of their money. Stop it. Um, so um, that's my that's my tax <laughs> that's my tax pep talk for today. Um, so the takeaways are um, make it a goal to fill out your tax return this year if you've never done it, and if you have, kudos. Keep doing it. Keep doing it, even when it gets complicated. We're like, oh, Schedule C is so scary. Schedule A even scarier. Schedule V, I don't know. But just trust yourself. Like trust yourself. And, and if you have questions ever, no, seriously, like put it on Twitter. Put. I'll get on Periscope and I'll answer your questions because I like to know the rules and that's, I've done it and I, and I will answer your question to the best of my ability um, and um, I'll give you the assessment, like what's the tax code and, and, and give you the confidence to do it. I know you can do it. Uh, and if you're not doing it because, again, you feel like you want to pay for the service provider, at least read it. At least read the tax code and say, is there something I can do differently that will allow me to keep more of my money, like more of my earnings and shield it from taxation in some legitimate way, you know, like it, it's not about trying to like, you know, make stuff up on your tax return, just saying, look, legitimately, I'm entitled to these tax deductions and I should pay less for my taxes because that's what the government rules are. Uh, and um, so understand it and, and, and pay attention. Uh, so do one of those things and then start taking some action where you have identified those areas that you can that you can impact on a tax return, do take action. You know, when it's time to enroll in the in your benefits, or even now, like you're like, okay, I signed up for 401k. Hey, from Russia, um, talking about the U.S. Uh, tax code. So I don't know if it's that interesting uh, to you. Um, so, but do start taking start taking um, steps to either increase your 401k contribution, open an IRA, like do it, do it. You can still open it for last year, like for an IRA, if till April 15th to do it. Say if you can change your benefit uh, designation, talk to HR people, you know, there's all kinds of things, all kinds of actions you can take. Pick one, you know, pick one and do something because you may not notice it right away. It's really hard for people because it's like, oh, taxes, you know, like maybe your paycheck, you know, when you, put more money in your 401k, your paycheck will decrease, but not as much as your net worth will increase, right? So that's one, um, so that's one, uh, that's why it's important to kind of, you know, it's not just to have faith, but to understand the implications and understand the math to go behind it. Okay. 
Oh, so half hour. Um, anyone have any questions? I know there's like four people and I really appreciate you guys like writing it out because I do think that most people just like head in the sand and ignore it. And I think if you really want to, if you're really serious, if you're really serious, and again, you can pay someone to do all that stuff for you, but if you're starting out and you're really serious, you need to understand the tax implications of what you're doing. Um, if, as you're building your empire, uh, or as you're just going through life and trying to, you know, make sure you, you can do better for yourself and for your kids, uh, if you don't understand the tax code, um, you're leaving money on the table. So, if you have any questions, if not, thank you for, again, thanks, and if you're a replayer and you do have some burning tax questions, uh, Twitter. Uh, find me on Twitter, ask me a question, I'll answer it, I'll get on Periscope, or I'll just answer it on Twitter. So, have a great weekend, guys. It's Friday afternoon, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm off to uh, uh, spend uh, my weekend with four-year-olds. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather be doing taxes. No, no, really, I would. So. I will see you guys. Well, if you join tomorrow morning, I'll be on Money Habits at uh, 10 a.m. And if not, uh, maybe I'll catch you on some other Money Matters topic. So stay tuned. We're going to do investments, uh, like basics of stocks and bonds and just investing in mutual funds, blah, blah, blah. Uh, retirement, uh, retirement accounts, IRA, Roth, 401ks, 403bs, all that crap. We'll cover that. We are going to do compounding. And we're going to do college savings plans as well. So these are the four topics that I'm going to be covering. And again, I'm trying to do like two. These are a little more intensive because I do prepare for them. And uh, I make little slides for myself. And I think about it. And I do research. I Google stuff. I copy paste. Uh, and so these are a little more intensive. So I'm just doing two a week. And they don't have a regular schedule yet because I do have to work this around my client schedules. So thank you guys so much.